Yeah, my bag didn't arrive. No baggage. Zero kg. 62 and then 62. It was better than I thought. So maybe they must give this way. It really took two years. <laughs> That's mad! That's mad! Yeah? Yeah? Come on! Come on! Come on, yeah! Stop! <laughs> I'm gonna go Casablanca, Casablanca, Istanbul. I'm gonna try find my luggage. I'm gonna try my best. Let's fly down. Look through CCTV, and go to Lost and Found, go to Royal Air Maroc. I want to try everything. Back in familiar territory. The regional manager fully dodged me, man. He's like, oh, who yeah. Bounce. I'm not leaving this. Airport until I find this guy. So I found your man. He was shocked that I found him first of all. I sat roaming around the airport. And then he told me, Look, I'm very sorry. I don't speak Turkish. Can you wait for my Turkish partners to come? Should we sort that out? I was like, You know what? Sure. Half an hour has passed. I go up to the office. I asked the brother working there, Where's our brother Abdurrahman? He's like, This guy's gone home. He shifts over. So inshallah, I can sort that out with the Turks, man. Or else I'm going to have a problem with this Abdurrahman fella. Because he's the one that actually checked in my baggage himself. He's the one who done that. I'm not gonna lie to you, your man grafted both of them. Both of them. They were in there for like two hours trying to find me on the system. And then when they did, there's like no trace. Called lost the phone, called everything. And even at one point he was like, listen bro, there's nothing I could do. I need to catch the bus. I was like, where are you catching the bus to? He goes, I'm going to town. I was like, I'm going to town too. I'm not going to town, but I'm going past town. He was like, yeah, let's hop a taxi. I was like, I'll pay for your taxi. He was like, oh, I can't. Listen, I'm going to town anyways. Home with me. He was like, okay. Because I actually had such high hopes. I had such high expectations. I thought I was going to come here and I'm going to find it. Allah. Alhamdulillah. I'm just thinking I have a long journey ahead. I have so much coming up. I can't just be moving around in this bag. I literally got homeless walking around with this. The irony, Jeddah right on top of Tel Aviv. You probably know from the title, I'm going to Amar. I have my Ahram right here in the bag. I'm going to get through security, everything put on my Ahram before I get on the plane. The most important thing, especially doing something like Amrah, you see a lot of it on social media, a lot of people are kind of showing that they're doing it, this, that and the other. And I get it, I'm hyped as well. Like I wanna, I'm excited. I can't wait to do it. I can't wait to go. Because it's a ibadah, there needs to be a class. And obviously when you're filming it, it's very tough to be 100% sincere. It always is tough, especially when you're online. But then if you're doing the actual act of ibadah and you're just too busy filming it, I get you might have a few seconds here and there of, you can just whip it out, get a few clips. Yes, but like just getting like sick content while you're doing your Umrah trip. This is mad. And also one of the things that you need to say or that the Prophet Sallallahu used to say before he actually done his Umrah at the Miqat, he says, Allahumma Umratan la riya'a fiha wa la sum'a. So it's very important that you're not doing this to show off, you're not doing this to flex on your boys. If that is the case, renew your intentions and think, why am I doing this? Because what we say in Umrah is لبيك اللهم لبيك لبيك لا شريك لك لبيك There's no partners with you, oh Allah. No partners with you in worship, no partners with you in anything. And if you're doing something other than for the sake of Allah Azza wa then there's partners. The partners, your friends, your mates, your audience, the people that you're trying to show, the people that you're trying to flex on, do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
have ikhlas in your niyyah and always renew it. You're not doing this to flex on your boys. If that is the case, renew your intentions and think, why am I doing this? And if it's not for the right reasons, if you're not making a video to educate, to let people know, to inspire, to maybe you have some mates that are, they'd rather spend their money out partying, going to different, you know, holiday destinations, Mallorca, Ibiza, da 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 this and that, but they have the dough to go Umrah, but they're not going and they see you going and you document it and you show them they feel inspired by it, then do that. But always renew your intentions. How much is that in euro? 120. 120 euro for 10 kg? What? Right, okay. I'm just trying to go on. Yeah, card. I was so traumatized from my previous experience of losing my luggage. I'm just screaming at it. Did you give me my dad? Give me my dad. Give me my dad. Because the last time I actually checked in, luggage, they didn't give me a tag, and then it got lost. And then that was it. Also, I'm debating, should I put on the ihram after I get past security check or should I put it on the actual airplane? It's a tough decision because you're going to be commando and that's not something I'm kind of used to. I decided I'm going to bite the bullet and wear my ihram. Scratch that, I can't find the change rooms. Right, we're in the business. He tries to just refresh the memories since the last time I was in Angola was three years ago to get a nice tight great on the I was at the top of the line, now I'm in the back of the line because I had to book a flight out of Saudi, literally, to be allowed to board the flight. I was going to do that anyways, but I procrastinated it. So he's like, you're not boarding the flight until you actually show us that you're going to depart Saudi Arabia. So I just booked the flight just there. I made so many rookie mistakes. Mistake number one is not having like a, a pouch or a bag that I can just throw on. Mistake number two is bringing a backpack. Wearing a haram and wearing a backpack, don't do it. Mm. I am sleep deprived. This is gonna be worth it. I literally slept a total of four hours in the past two days. Can you tell? Dying. That's 10 kilos in my hand. Now this is a technique and a half. I love this. Let's see if this works. Boom. If you're watching this and you want to go Amrat, learn from my experience. Don't be floating around with a bag. And don't forget your pouch. Happy days. Now I just realized my credit card's still in there. It turns out if you have a tourist visa, you don't need to pay for the bus. They give you a free show all the way down to the Haram. So you don't have to take out my card and this is also information for you. If you come down, straight away go to the office, get a free show, man. Don't get a taxi, don't do none of that. <laughs> The bus literally dropped me right underneath the clock tower, so it's handy. Didn't have to catch a taxi or anything. I thought maybe I'd have to catch a taxi or on my own transport, but literally my hotel's right here. Let's find my room, 1440. No one come kill me, no one come murder me. All right, quick little room tour. We got the kitchen, desk, my bag. Alhamdulillah, I reached two beds, even though I'm alone. Desk, Quran. 1956 TV and then let's see the view. I don't think I have a view. I think it's like of the mountains or something, but I'm not here for the room. Oh I have a nice view. It's not of the Kaaba, but it's not of the mountains either. I'm not here for the hotel room views. This guy made it. <laughs> he touched it, you know, I could just tell. You need to shave off your head, bro. You look like a Mongolian warrior.
السلام عليك يا خير خلق الله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا